There's been one question that's plagued developers for years, including myself, causing countless hours of googling, trial and error, and absolute failure. And that question is, how the f*** do I play a random animation using Unity? Well, I'm going to tell you. I'm Mike from Comp3 Interactive, welcome back to the channel. And as you may have guessed today, we're going to be looking at an easy way that we can choose a random animation out of a set and play it whenever we like. So this is probably going to be quite a short tutorial, but I have seen quite a few people struggle with this and it's really simple to fix. So just before we get into it, I just want to thank Gigatank3000 for sponsoring this video. I've got his links down in the description below. Go check him out on Twitter, go check out his website and keep up to date with what he's doing. And I also just want to thank everybody supporting me over on Patreon. You guys are fantastic. Okay, so as you can see, the project here, I just have uh, Maria, the model from Mixamo. Uh, if you don't know what Mixamo is, it's a place where you can get uh, free animations online, owned by Adobe. I'll put a link in the description for that. It's a really useful tool for beginners. And if we just dock our animator window to one side for now, we can see I have my idle animation. But then... I have four different attack animations. Now, each one of these in my dream scenario for this game are going to have the same amount of damage. It's just the aesthetic of the attack that's different. And the way that I've seen a lot of people do this is they'll set up quite a few parameters for these attacks. And it'll be like, do basic attack. And then if it is basic attack, we'll do the basic attack or kick attack or slash attack. And that's just, frankly, awful way of doing it. So what we're going to do, we're going to delete all of our attack animations. We're going to right-click inside of our animator, and we're going to create a new sub-state machine. And we're going to name this Attacks. And if we double-click that, it'll open up as if it's a brand new animator window. And this is where we're going to put all of our animations. We open up our animations tab, we'll take the basic attack, the kick, the slash, and the spin attacks, drag all of those in, and we'll just make this look a little bit neater. We'll just pop all of these in line. Perfect. So we'll leave that for now and hop back over to our base layer. Now our base layer is where all the magic happens. As you can see, entry point goes into our idle animation. And just like any other animation transition, we can right click, make transition, and transition to this entire state machine. Now you see you get a little menu pop up that you don't usually get. What this is, it's allowing you to transition to an individual state or the actual state machine itself. And we want to select the state machine attacks. And then from attacks, make the transition back to idle, just like you normally would. Now we're going to need two parameters for this. We're going to need a trigger, which we're just going to call attack and we're also going to need an integer which is going to be our attack index and we want to transition from idle to attacks when our attack trigger is active so we'll select our arrow that goes from idle to attacks disable has exit time and instead we'll add the condition of attack and we can make sure that we have our exit transition as well. So when our attack's finished, we'll automatically go back to our idle state. Now, that's all well and good, but what do we do about this attack substate? Well, as you can see, we've already got an entry point to this. So that entry point's going to hit whenever idle passes over to attacks. We'll start at entry, and so far, we're just going to our basic attack. But what we can do, we can make transitions from the entry point to each one of our attacks. And then we want to remember to transition from all of our attacks to exit, which is going to leave this state machine and go back to our base layer. So now we have all of our transitions linked up, we can determine which attack index is going to correspond with which attack. So our default layer we can't amend. So by default, we're going to say zero is a basic attack. If we click on our next arrow, the one to the kick attack, we see we can add some conditions. So I'm going to add in the condition of attack index equals 1. Same again for the slash attack, but this time it's going to be attack index equals 2. And finally, spin attack, attack index 
equals three. And essentially that's it. As long as we change our attack index at the same time as we actually trigger our attack trigger, idle will transition into attacks and then the attack substate will determine which attack to play based on our attack index. Now we can actually script this up really quickly so we can see it working. Just call my script Maria and let's set this up really quickly. So we've got a private animator anim in the start. We'll set anim equals to get component animator. Again, this is just a really simple way of doing it. Sod off animator. So you'll have your animator set up however you have in your game. Next, I'm just going to make the start method a core routine, just so I don't need to call anything else. And while true, we're going to yield return, wait for seconds, three. That's a new wait for seconds. And now this is where we're controlling our animations. So anim.set integer attack index, and then we can pass in a random dot range between zero and four. Now remember, it's got to be one more than your actual number of attacks, because when you're using random dot range with integers, the maximum value is excluded. So now we've set our attack index, we can set anim.set trigger attack. So now what that should do, that should loop around, it should wait three seconds, pick a random attack, and then do that attack, wait another three seconds, and then rinse and repeat. So now if we hop back over into Unity and hit play, we should see, we hit our idle, we come into an attack, we pick a random attack, the kick. Next, we pick the slash. And there you go. You can see this working now. We're just gonna pick a random value just before we do our attack. And now we're gonna play a random attack. And this can be used for anything from death animations, idle animations, anything that you like. So I told you it was gonna be short, but I did tell you it was gonna be easy as well. So I hope you've learned something today and I hope you wanna subscribe, like, comment, all that random stuff. So yeah, I'll see you again next week. Thanks for watching guys. If you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel for weekly Unity tutorials.